that's that's the number seven, as in the seven seas, the seven dwarfs, the seven deadly sins, or the seven days of the week. But in chemistry, typically to us, especially when we deal with acids and bases, seven means something that's neutral, substance that's neither acidic nor basic. And how do we figure that out? Well, we use this relationship, one in 555 million. So, how does that equate to the number seven? Well, let's figure it out. So if we think back to previous science courses or chemistry courses in which you've been asked to calculate pH, well, pH is just determined by taking the negative log of the concentration of the hydronium ion. And typically up until this point, we've used the negative log of the acid concentration to be equivalent to or equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion and the hydrogen ion in the solution. But up until this point, that's been okay because we've been using strong acids. As we're going to learn, that's really sort of dependent on the nature of the acid that we're using. But up until this point, it's been strong acids. We can also use this relationship to establish the hydronium ion or, hydro or the hydrogen ion concentration of a particular solution if we know its pH because we can take 10 and raise it to the negative exponent of whatever pH it is that we're monitoring. And pH, of course, tells us the acidic nature of the solution, that is, the acidity of the solution by taking a look at the amount or concentration of the hydronium ion. The greater the concentration of the hydronium ion, it gives us a corresponding low pH, which increases the acidic nature of the solution. And if we have something where we have a low concentration of hydrogen ion or hydronium ion, we get a resulting high pH, which indicates to us that we have a low acidity of that particular solution. But if we have an acidity of a solution, high and low, we can also have a basicity or basic nature of a solution, high and low. And if we understand that it's the hydronium ion that gives us the acidic nature, it's the hydroxide ion that gives us the basic nature. So we can perform a very similar calculation to this that we refer to as pOH. And pOH is just determined by taking the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And similarly, if we know the pOH of a solution, we can raise 10 to the exponent of the negative pOH and figure out our hydroxide ion concentration. And there's a relationship that exists between these two things if there's a pH table or a pH set of values or a range that go from 0 to 14, there's a corresponding PO, pOH table of values that go from 14 to 0. And ultimately the relationship that exists between those two values is that the pH and the pOH when added together are going to equal 14. So what this allows us to do then is any time that we know the pH we can establish the pOH and any time we know the pOH we can use this relationship to figure out the pH. Now if we're going to apply this, I want to understand the relationship between pH and pOH a little better, as well as the concentration of hydroxide ion to hydronium ion concentration relationship a little better. And there's an important concept right here. Pure water is not free of ions. Even if we say that it's deionized water, there are still ions that exist in that solution because water itself undergoes auto-ionization. Let's think about this for a second. Water has a pH of 7. I think we know that. But if it has a pH of 7, think back to how we calculate pH. It's the negative log of the hydronium ion or hydrogen ion concentration. And so if water has a pH, that must mean that there are hydrogen ions or hydronium ions in there. And in fact, there are. And that gives us our pH value. So remember, if we know the pH value, we can then use it to figure out the concentration of hydronium ions. And it's determined that water does, in fact, have a concentration of hydronium ions of 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that 1 out of every, and here's the number, 555 million water molecules will actually form these ions. So while deionized water does contain ions, it doesn't contain very many of them. And if we think back to our relationship between pH and pOH, we can also establish that if water has a pH of 7, it also has a pOH of 7. So that if it has a hydro hydrogen ion concentration, it also has a hydroxide ion concentration. And these two values are equal. That is, they're 1 times 10 to the negative 7. And so if we understand that this is a relationship that water must have when it undergoes auto-ionization, that is, water ionizes into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, we can come up with a constant. 
and we call this the ion product constant for water and at 25 degrees Celsius we have values of 1 times 10 to the negative 7 times 1 times 10 to the negative 7 and we get a value of 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So water has a ion product constant that, that we refer to as Kw and at 25 degrees Celsius we equate it to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Well, let's take a look at this in a little more detail. If we break it apart and recognize that it's always going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14, at least at 25 degrees Celsius, and that it's equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydronium ions, we have a relationship here. That is, if we're in a solution that is or solvated by water, that is water as the solvent, if the concentration of the hydroxide ion goes up, the concentration of the hydronium ion must go down and vice versa. So if we take a look at our first scenario in which the two are equal, then we have a neutral solution. That is, a neutral solution is not just one in which the pH is 7, because really that's sort of temperature dependent, but if we have something in which we have a neutral solution, it's that the concentration of hydroxide is equal to the concentration of hydronium. Now, if the concentration of hydroxide were to go up, that would mean that the concentration of the hydronium would have to go down. And so what we're left with in that scenario, where a concentration of hydroxide is greater than the concentration of the hydronium ions, that's when we have a basic solution. On the flip side of this, if we were to have a hydronium ion concentration or a hydrogen ion concentration that was greater than the hydroxide ion concentration, then we would have an acidic solution. And really what this leads us to, if we take a look at this pH scale, is it doesn't necessarily tell us that something is acidic versus basic. What it does is it gives us an indication of the relative acidity or basicity of a particular solution. So that as we go down the pH scale, we have decreasing basicity and increasing acidity because we have a greater concentration of hydronium ions than we do hydroxide ions. We're not devoid of hydroxide ions, we just have a much greater concentration of the hydronium ions than we do of the hydroxide ions. And on the flip side of that, as we go up the pH scale, we have increasing basicity because we have a greater concentration of hydroxide ions than we do hydronium ion. Back to our number seven here and back to our relationship up here. If somebody ever tells you you're one in a million, well, you're still 555 times more common than finding a hydrogen ion in a sample of water. Thanks for watching. So if you're looking to watch this video again, or if you're looking for some additional videos on some of the chemistry topics you've been covering in class, take a look at our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.